Back in the 19th century, chemists were still unraveling the mysteries of how molecules could transform from one form to the other. And it was during this time that a German chemist named, okay, uh, how do I spell this correctly? August Wilhelm von Hoffmann. Okay, let's keep it simple. A German chemist named Hoffmann made a groundbreaking discovery, a reaction that could convert an amide into a primary amine. Now, you can see that this reaction has already caught our interest, right? How are we getting a primary amine with one carbon less than the starting amide? So, that's interesting in itself. But what makes this reaction truly remarkable is its mechanism, the mechanism that is involved in this transformation. It has a very interesting rearrangement that takes place and it involves the formation of an intermediate RNCO, an isocyanide that gives us a primary amine as a final product. Now you see, although this reaction is no longer used to synthesize primary amines on let's say like a large scale synthesis, it still has a lot of relevance especially in understanding rearrangement mechanisms, intermediates and the overall elegance of molecular transformation like the one that's here, amine from amide. So let's go ahead and see what this reaction actually looks like. So this is the overview of Hoffman bromomide degradation reaction. As you can see here, a starting reactant is an amide. And when we treat this amide with bromine and a strong base like NaOH, aqueous NaOH or alcoholic NaOH, we get a primary amine with one carbon less than the starting reactant. Now this is an example of a descending step reaction. What do we mean by that? We end up with a product that has fewer carbon atoms than the starting reactant. And these kind of reactions which are descending step or ascending step reactions have a lot of significance again when we are talking about transformations. You know in the synthesis of new compounds or long conversion reactions where multiple steps are involved. So this reaction might come in super handy when we need to prepare a primary amine with one carbon less than the starting reactant. So let's now deep dive and see what exactly is happening in this reaction. What is indeed that amazing mechanism and rearrangement that is happening here. Okay. So the first step is a deprotonation step where we deprotonate the amide followed by a nucleophilic attack on bromine. So in this deprotonation step, you can see that the hydroxyline abstracts one of the hydrogen atoms from the amide. And this is possible because these hydrogen atoms are acidic because they are attached to an electronegative atom like nitrogen. And also the carbonyl group here is also electron withdrawing. So these effects cumulatively make these hydrogen atoms acidic. And a strong base like NaOH can easily abstract this proton giving us this deprotonated amide. Now here the nitrogen atom is again nucleophilic because now it has an extra pair of electron which it uses to attack the electrophilic bromine molecule. And this attack gives us N-bromoamide where one of the hydrogen atoms of our amide has been replaced by a bromine atom. Right? Now the second step is once again a deprotonation step. So here the OH- abstracts another acidic hydrogen atom from this N-bromoamide and it again gives us these deprotonated forms and here is where the magic happens. Basically the presence of a very good living group like bromide ion allows this migration to happen. A double bond forms here and a rearrangement or the R group migrates towards the nitrogen atom and elimination of bromide ion takes place. I know this looks like a complicated uh, rearrangement but this is aided by the fact that bromide ion is a very good living group. The presence of a good leaving group allows the alkyl group to migrate and the leaving group to leave. So here with the elimination of Br- you get RnCO an isocyanate intermediate. So to recap we can see that the N double bond of forms here and once the double bond forms here carbon cannot have 5 bonds and migration of this alkyl or the aryl group takes place to the nitrogen atom and bromine leaves as bromide ion. Again remember the reaction is being carried out in a super alkaline medium, right? So the third step again involves the attack of a hydroxide ion on the carbonyl carbon of our isocyanate. So this gives us a carbamic acid as you can see here. So the OH- attacks the carbonyl carbon here and the delocalization of pi electrons take place. 
and finally the C double bond o gets restored and nitrogen abstracts a proton from the medium and this gives us a carbamic acid now the thing is carbamic acids are highly unstable it almost spontaneously breaks down and loses a carbon dioxide molecule as you can see here and give us this RNH minus which takes up a proton from the medium and gives us a primary amine as the final product. So this is broadly what happens in Hoffman bromide degradation reaction. Now you will notice that in each step I have highlighted OH minus in certain boxes. Now this basically to see how much amount of OH minus is getting consumed in this entire reaction. So if we go back to the first step, the first step of deprotonation consumes one mole of OH minus. In the second step, which is again another deprotonation step, here again we need OH minus. In the third step, we are using OH minus to form a carbamic acid. And in the last step, we again need OH minus in the decarboxylation step to release CO2, right? So in this entire process, we are basically using four moles of NaOH, right? So to summarize, this is what the reaction looks like. You have an amide here. And when we treat this amide with bromine and NaOH, we get an isocyanate intermediate. You can see that the rearrangement takes place here. In this case, the carbon 2 is connected to carbon 1 of carbonyl compound, but that changes in the isocyanate intermediate. The carbon 2 gets connected to the nitrogen atom here, nitrogen of our isocyanate. So this intermediate is formed after the rearrangement takes place. And then what happens, the isocyanate gets converted to a carbamic acid, which as we know is unstable. It loses the carbon dioxide molecule giving us this primary amine as the final product. Now the advantage of Hoffman bromomide reaction as compared to another reaction like say Gabriel thalamide synthesis is that we can also synthesize primary arylamines and also amines with tertiary alkyl groups, primary means with tertiary alkyl groups in this method, in Hoffman bromide reaction, which would not be possible using the Gabriel thalamate synthesis, right? We saw that this is essentially an SN2 reaction and aryl halide and aryl halide and tertiary alkyl halides are very poor substrates for SN2 reaction. But we just saw that Hoffman bromide reaction has no such SN2 constraints. It does not go through a nucleophilic substitution reaction. And that means these kind of primary amines can be easily synthesized using Hoffman reaction. For example, look at this reaction. Here we have an amide which when undergoes Hoffman bromomide degradation reaction gives us a primary amine. You can see that this amine has a tertiary alkyl group attached to it, right? Similarly, aniline and substituted aniline can be easily prepared by the Hoffman degradation reaction. Now before wrapping up this video, let's go back to this reaction and see what are the byproducts that are formed here. We saw amide getting converted to primary amine, but in the mechanism we saw carbon dioxide getting eliminated, right? So some of you might get confused that why are we not showing carbon dioxide here? Why are we writing sodium carbonate instead of carbon dioxide? That's because the reaction medium is still highly alkaline and in such a highly alkaline medium, carbon dioxide gets converted to Na2CO3, sodium carbonate. So that is why we are not writing carbon dioxide here, but actually showing sodium carbonate being formed here. Okay. So don't worry, even if you write carbon dioxide here as a byproduct, that is not wrong. All right. Okay. So that's it folks for this video. Let's solve a couple of questions on these reactions in the next video.